we're gonna transition a little bit because what what he just went over was really all about commercial jurisdiction, how the taxes work. Your number one expense is taxes. So being able to reduce your tax liability automatically puts you in a better financial position. And then you combine that with some of the things that we were talking this morning, discipline, spend less than what you make, right? How can we increase our income? How can we get a promotion on our, at our job? How can we take the, the skills, gifts, and talents that God gave us and turn that into a service-based business, you know, opening up an online e-commerce store, right? In addition to stocks, real estate, and cryptocurrency, there's intangible services, financial coaching, life coaching, um, therapy coaching. I mean, there's a whole laundry list of different coaching services that we kingdom citizens, kingdom coaches, can provide to the world at rates that we can net a profit from. And then you work with a Kenneth, right, or, or someone you know, in the local area that knows the tax code in your local state can help reduce that, right? And so essentially what he was, you know, getting at, he, he said it without saying it, but he's trying to get you to come from the E and the S quadrant, employee and self-employed, to the B and the I quadrant, okay? There's a book called The Cash Flow Quadrant. After you read uh, Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, after you read that, read the cash flow quadrant, okay? The, these are the four main areas that you and I all can produce income in commercial jurisdiction, United States tax code. Here in the U.S., we're all U.S. citizens here. You can either be an employee, highest tax bracket there is, self-employee, second highest, B in the I, business investor. He was talking a lot on this, investor, real estate, stocks, cryptocurrency, basically taking your cash flow, putting it into cash flow vehicles, right, that produce revenue. I'm going to get to you in a second. And then business, like he just said, the best thing you can do is have a business. So that's all about being, becoming incorporated. So you're essentially taking the money you make out of your name into another name, another entity, another being. And, and that particular being is, in my case, builder to contributor LLC, right? I immediately, all things that I do in that entity will be taxed less. And then you couple that with because I'm paying less tax, I have more cash flow to what? Invest in other cash flow producing vehicles, which those cash flow producing vehicles don't charge you no tax or bare minimum, right? Very, very little. So that's what he went over. And what I'm gonna talk about, if we can pull up uh, my presentation on the Kingdom Financial Workshop back there, if you guys can pull that up on the screen. we. We're going to get into our jurisdiction, kingdom citizens. There's a jurisdiction that exists. A lot of you do not are not aware of this. And I know, Pastor, you're going to want to be front and center for this, right? Because, and you're going to want to have your notes ready. Because what our tax professional was just going over, like I said, commercial jurisdiction. Now, as a kingdom citizen, okay, you believe in God, this almighty being, this all-knowing, all through his son, Jesus Christ, who came on earth in the flesh, he did not come to planet earth to bring you Christianity. No, he did not. Nor Catholicism, nor Baptists, no Pentecost. He came to bring the kingdom, reestablish it, in fact reestablish the kingdom and he used this model word ecclesia which 
in today's term means church. But ecclesia does not share the same definition that you and I are aware of when it comes to church. Okay? Ecclesia, the word ecclesia, E C C L E S I A, was invented by the Greeks. Okay? Greeks invented it, they implemented it, the Romans took over, Caesar had an ecclesia. Jesus comes on the scene in the fullness of time because during that time, people understood kingdom structure. People understood kingdom government, kingdom systems, kingdom protocols, kingdom etic etiquette. That's why he came during that time and not now, right? Came in that time. And so I've been doing some of a, a lot of research, a lot of homework on this. And to be fully, again, we're in covenant fully open, honest, and transparent. I have no idea what I'm talking about when it comes to this jurisdiction I'm gonna share with you. I have no idea what I'm talking about. I'm allowing the Holy Spirit to literally speak through my vocal cords. The information that, that God had me write down, it's like I get it, but I still don't get it, right? So I'm learning this and my hope is that I can connect with other pastors that have been doing this much longer than I have, and we can come together in common unity, right? And establish our commonwealth outside of the world into kingdom jurisdiction. And I don't know why the, is it, is it ringing? It's ringing a little bit, right? I think maybe just lower it just a little bit, that volume. I don't yell too much. And I feel like you guys can hear me really good. Okay, cool. Um, so we were talking about really getting our numbers in line. Four major numbers. Then what do we do once we have our four major numbers? How can we redirect cash flow? Reducing your tax liability simply as an employee. And I'm pretty sure Kenneth can agree on this. Um, you should not be receiving a tax refund if you're an employee. Would you agree with that? Gotcha, so I got a green light from him. So that simply means if you got a tax refund, you literally overpaid the IRS and you're already paying the highest tax rate. You're already paying the highest tax and y'all over here, I got my refund, I got my refund. What? No, you do not want to be overpaying the IRS. So how do we not overpay the IRS. It has to do with how you uh, file those allowances, I believe is the word. There's a number, a lot of you put zero or one or two. When I was an employee, 21, 22, 23 years old, when I was an employee, no kids, not married, I had six on mine. I wasn't, I wasn't withholding any tax to the IRS out of my paycheck. I say, you go get your money at the end of the year if I owe you anything. The goal as an employee is to not owe any tax at the end of the year nor receive any refund. Do I get a, do I get a check from that from my tax guy in the back? I think he's in a conversation. But the goal is to not owe tax as an employee, right? Because it's going to take you some time for some people to transition from the E and the S quadrant to the B and the I. It's not going to happen overnight, right? But if you get around people who have done it and have been doing it for multiple years, they can accelerate that path. Would you agree? So I'm going to ask it again. It's, it's the goal that as an employee, w, W2, I don't want to owe any tax at the end of the year, nor do I want to receive a refund. Good, I'm doing my homework, love it. All right, so those are some, some strategies that we can literally add on to, to the things that we just discussed all this morning, right, Stephanie? All these little things that we can look at. And in addition to what Pastor Mark was saying about knowing your credit score, credit is leverage, okay? Whether you like it or not, it doesn't hurt to have a good credit 
system, credit score, because then we can get access to 0% credit cards. Okay, we were just having a conversation in the back with some of the leaders, and they were asking me questions just about how we can leverage credit cards to maybe pay off some debt or accelerate our debt faster, right? So we'll, we'll cover that just a little bit here. I don't want to dive too deep, but essentially, there are credit cards in the marketplace, and the way that I like to approach banks is I will start with the small banks, okay? Reason why I like small banks, in other words, credit unions. Typically, these banks charge zero or little fees on checking accounts, savings accounts, um, whenever you need checks, uh, wire transfers, they, they charge a significantly less amount of money. And in many cases, for just opening up a checking account, you have to have a certain amount in there, right? Um, I know Bank of America does this. If you have a business checking account, it's like $12, $15 a month if you don't maintain a balance over five grand, okay? At a credit union, I think it's like $1,500 minimum or 1000 No, no fee whatsoever. If there is, it's like two, five bucks. So that's a great way to reduce expenses uh, and maximize your relationships with the banks. Other reason, the credit unions in your local area, in Ohio, their only clients are you. They want to see you succeed. They want you to build your business. So they have additional services and people that they can potentially plug you into. We can get access to better deals, right? So when it comes to the velocity banking concept, acquiring a debt tool, whether that be a credit card, all right, so if you're taking notes, here are all the debt tools, credit cards, personal business, personal line of credit, personal business line of credit, right? Two different options. Then you have HELOCs, home equity line of credit, first, second position. First position literally means that you don't actually have a mortgage anymore. Your mortgage is the HELOC. And then the HELOC becomes your checking account, becomes your savings account, becomes your emergency fund, becomes your sinking fund. Imagine having all your income paying down your mortgage. That's what a first lien HELOC can do, right? Second lien HELOC is like exactly what it is, a second lien on your property where you have access to the equity to do things with, either pay off debt or create cash flow. Right? I work with a ton of clients that use the equity in their home, uh, the equity in their properties. They borrow from it, and they acquire a second property, a third, a fourth. And then the cash flow from that property feeds back to their HELOC along with their income from their job, and it's paying down this balance. Meanwhile, they just acquired a new mortgage over here. Right? They don't care about paying off the debt on that because they're getting the deduction on taxes. Uh, they're able to, um, what well, there's deduction, appreciation. There's all kinds of tax incentives for having uh, real estate. So when they look at what they're paying in interest versus what they get back in terms of tax deduction, it doesn't make any sense to pay off the debt. Now that debt has become good debt. debt that makes me money, right? So they use their debt tool, their HELOC, they pay it down really fast within six to nine months, upwards of a year. And what happens when we bring the line of credit to zero? What are we preparing for? Chunk, chunk the next chunk to get the next property or to pay off the next debt, okay? So those are your main debt tools and then there's cash value life insurance, okay? That's becoming your own banking system, okay? We won't dive too deep into that, but I have a ton of content on that, all right? So in regards to just the banks, we want to deal with small credit unions. From there, I go to national, right? Or it might be called federal. And typically, the national and federal credit unions are like Navy Fed, Penn Fed, um, I think U.S. Bank. Um, key bank, right? These, these 
bigger banks, they do business in maybe seven states or 10 states, 12 states. That's my next option if I'm not able to find the right debt tool for my financial situation. Again, everything is customized for each and every one of you. There isn't no cookie cutter. It's personal finances is personal. So you gotta customize it to what works best for you, right? Make sense? So after the national and federal credit unions, then I go uh, nationwide or, or major bank. That's where I end up. Major banks is Chase, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, right? I don't typically like doing business with these banks. If you do your homework on these major banks, you'll, you'll learn from a biblical standpoint that the main purpose of these major banks since really their inception is to usher in a one world government, a one world currency, a one world order. It says it in your Bible, right? That's the, that's the spiritual word giving you insight in the physical realm of what's going on, right? When you look at all of the major fines, take Wells Fargo, for example, these predatory loans on Hispanics and blacks, right? All these different things. And it baffles me that y'all still bank with them. Yet there's credit unions in your local area. There's black owned credit unions. There's these um, banks that are specific to you that you can be getting so much more. So when I talk to my clients that have been banking with Wells or Chase or Bank of America, I'm like, what have they done for you in the last 15 years, 20 years, right? Like the local credit union that I'm with, like they hit me up and they asked me, you know, different things that they got going on, different businesses, different business programs. They'll, sometimes they do networking events. They're trying to stimulate growth, economic growth in the local community, right? So as we're learning the velocity banking concept, because I know there's some of you in here that you're like, wow, this is deep stuff, heavy stuff. Okay, just remember that there's pregame work. Got a YouTube channel over 600 videos. You're gonna take the necessary time. Throughout this, today, tomorrow, I hope to go as many case studies as I can, right? And then as we wrap up the event, we could strategize maybe the next event that we could do together, right? Whether that be virtual or in person, right? And we can just keep building and building and building together until we have all become debt free, okay? Another unique opportunity in the marketplace today that has been going on for a while, but I recently just came across it, which is in addition to what Kenneth was saying about moving to business, right? Starting a business. There's something called becoming a certified business enterprise. Is anybody familiar with that term? CBE, SBE, MBE, W, okay. Say again? MBE, Minority Business Enterprise? You just got him. How hard was it? How hard was it? How tedious? I'm going to give her a mic. Um, it took me about, I don't, I don't want to go through the whole thing. I went through an organization that was supposed to help me, but she dropped the ball and my application was not completed. Yeah. And so I found out who did I need to go to. So I called the Columbus and talked to them directly. And then when I talked to them directly, it only took me about three months to okay. get all the information that they not needed. Bad. Yeah. Not bad. That's about how long it's taken me right now. So for those of you who have businesses, have been in business, if you're not certified as a minority business owner, minority business enterprise with the U.S. government. They, the U.S. government has the biggest pocketbook. The biggest pocketbook. They buy anything and everything you can think of. Anything and everything, the U.S. government buys it, right? And you can even get involved in importing and exporting, okay? So this is just a little tip I want you to write down 
is to consider this because there's what Kenneth talked about was the wealth transfer. There is wealth laid up through our U.S. government, whether you like them or not, okay? They have set money aside for minorities, black-owned business, women-owned business, percentages just for you. And the only way to access the keys to that kingdom, the United States government, is you need a CBE license, uh, certification, Certified Business Enterprise, uh, Small Business Enterprise, SBA.gov, um, Minority Business Enterprise, Women, Minority, WMBE, all these little, and basically what you're doing is you're becoming a contractor, either a prime or a subcontractor for the U.S. government. Whether your business does what the contract says you're going to do, it, that doesn't matter. What matters is the key. I'm sure Mr. Kenneth back there is very knowledgeable on some of this stuff. It's another great way to bring in a lot of money. I'm talking like racks on racks, okay, like the rappers say, like a lot, where imagine most business owners, when they start a business, they have to market. They go on YouTube, Instagram, uh, TikTok, Facebook. They do Facebook ads. They do marketing. They do speaking engagement. Do uh, all this. They got to sell. They got to market. They got to follow up. They got to have a CRM. They got to do all this stuff. With the right key, you turn it in the door. You open it. It doesn't matter how much experience you have. If you got that key, that certification with the U.S. government, game over. Game over. And with the right people to help you, we're talking about multiplying your income, multiplying, not growth. I'm all about multiplication. I'm all about multiplying your money over growth. I'm all about cash flow over net worth. I would rather have cash flow coming in 250000 a year or more. And the reason why I say 250000 a year or more is because there is something called an accredited investor. Okay. Most of us in here are not accredited, meaning you do not make more than 250000 a year, nor do you have over a million dollars in net worth. The moment you break that threshold in the kingdom of the United States, another key here, when you become an accredited investor, you get access to non-public investments, which you would receive higher dividends higher returns. Warren Buffett, for example, when he invests in a company, he's not buying the stocks that you're buying. He's getting what's called preferred stock. He gets paid before all you guys do, okay? Simply because he has a key that you don't have access to. So it's not a matter of how smart you are. It's not about how tall you are, how skinny, how beautiful you are, how knowledgeable you are on a topic. None of that matters if you do not have the keys to their kingdom, right? So those are some really interesting things that I just want you to take note of it. You might put it on the back burner. You might revisit it later because it just depends on where you're at, right? Stephanie's focus, debt, paying off debt, paying off debt, putting myself in a better financial position, getting a budget, getting discipline, Right? Spending more, more time with God on a different level of my finances. Right? Versus someone else in here might be generating multiple six figures. Right? And that's why I kind of brought up some of these topics. Because I know for some of you in here who are a little bit more advanced with your money, better budget, making good income, life's good. Okay, great. Let's take it to the next level. Because you have a responsibility. Those who have been blessed with finances, I'm starting to realize that as a young kingdom citizen, that for some reason, money just flows to me, for some reason, right? It may not flow for everybody that well. I just tap into my gift. The money flows to me. Well, now there's a responsibility. God's trusting me with more, right? So I have to be very, very, very conscious of how I steward my funds, and I'm very, very aware of the jurisdiction that I live and operate in, whether I like Pharaoh or not, okay? 
When I mean Pharaoh, I'm talking about the global, you know, controllers of the world, right? The people who control this whole thing that allow you to exist, right? Whether we like that or not, we're, we're set, we're called out ones, we're set aside, called out, right? So we have the protection of God the Father. But then there's Pharaoh, right? Or modern day times, the superpowers of the world, one of them being the United States of America, okay? That is a man-created system. I know it says one nation of the God. I know it says that. But you and I both know it's not quite what we know in kingdom. Our job is to go out and what? Baptize them and teach unto all the nations and be a what? A testimony unto the kings. The, the, does it not say that somewhere in the scripture? About being a testament to the kings. How do you get in the room with a king if you don't have the right material, the right linen, right? You need, you need the right clothing to have an audience with the kings, the princes, the pharaohs, the, the, the queens of today's time. Ain't no way you getting in the room, the corporate room, preaching hallelujah. It's not going to work. They don't know that. You do. That's your unique value proposition. You need to learn their game. Be wise as a serpent, gentle as a dove. Is that the correct? Okay. So how do I become wise as a serpent? I, I must learn their, their game. And it's real easy with them. It's all about the money with them, with the world system. It's all about the money. So if you learn how to master money, it cannot master you. So therefore, you're a master over it. And now you can focus on your true master. And, and it becomes this flow, right? Where you're operating in the world but not becoming of it. So with that being said, um, let's go to the next slide. Let's open this up. All right, that's just, you know, you know me. And then we talk, this is uh, basically what I wanted to discuss over the next two, three days. My business model, testimony about my work, levels of authority, ecclesiastical law and jurisdiction. That's a big word. Building tax-free wealth in the kingdom. There's a way to do it. Becoming debt-free and or debt leveraged. And we kind of went through a case study kind of going over that. So next. And then that's just a little bit about me. That beautiful woman right there is going to be my wife. Her name's Allison Andrade. Six-year relationship. We're building our relationship in the word. We're learning about God. By no means are we perfect. I'm learning a lot. She's learning a lot. She's going to become a lawyer next year, right? So, and then those are just some pictures of my clients, people I've worked with, people that have flown to like different, like this, this couple right here, they came from like a whole nother state to South Florida to hang out with me. And that restaurant uh, called Monty's, nice restaurant, um, like that guy is like nearly triple, double my age. That I mean, these people are like, they got money. This, this, like, that photo, that photo, I think, was, like, 2019 or 2020. I was just breaking, like, six figures in my business. And then those, those women up there, it's a, that's, a that's, that's the mom and that's her daughter, right? And so these people just, man, this is what the Lord does. I don't know. He, he qualifies those who he calls. Yes? Uh-oh. <laughs> I, got, I got no qualifications. I didn't go to college. I, you know, I'm like an average, you know, ABCs, a couple Ds, got an F. I'm not qualified. Go to the next screen. Let's talk about authority, okay? Uh, this, this fascinates me. I have been obsessed with learning about authority and how authority works. Because it's as simple as having the keys to open a door, the right doors, right? Anybody in here rent an apartment? You rent, you rent, you rent, I rent. For the first time in my life, I'm renting an apartment myself. 
the, the lease is in my name and my mother's name. Okay. The only way that I can enter that door, right? I don't own the property by any means, right? I don't own that apartment that I live in. There's a landlord who has the keys to his domain. And through a contract, there was an offer, acceptance, agreement, boom. I turn the key, the door opens. I can now live for the time being. I have authority over what happens in that apartment, although I don't own it. Very similar to how the kingdom works, does it not? God created the kingdom, right? The, his heavenly kingdom. And he wants to extend his heavenly kingdom here on earth. You and I agree that we don't own anything, right, in his, in his domain. We agree on that, right? We own nothing. He manages and stewards all of it. I mean, we manage and steward all of it. He owns it. So he's giving us authority for the time being that we're on planet earth to do what it is that his will may be done here on earth as it is in heaven. Okay, interesting. So let's talk about the levels of authority. Um, can you guys see it with the board in the way? It's in the way? All right, let's move that. Let's move it for a little bit. A little bit more? It's going to fall off. How's that? Is that better? Cool. So the highest level of authority is the author. If you're an author, you, anybody wrote a book in here? You wrote a book? You wrote four books? So you're an author of those four books. Meaning, if, if we want to learn about the books that she wrote, who would we get the information from? The right information. Because she's the author. So that means she has authority, right? Okay, so she's the author, root word, octor, source, originator. She originated that book. She's the source of that book, which gives her authority, the power or right to give orders, make decisions, enforce obedience on a person or organization, having power or control in a particular uh, political or administrative sphere. Interesting. It's interesting how deep authority goes into it, right? So you have authority to sell the book, to promote the book, to be interviewed by other podcasters, YouTubers, to promote your book, to talk about the book, which also gives you authorization where you can authorize others like myself to promote your book. After I read the book, let's say, I say, hey, I really loved your book. I learned that, that, that. Um, I have a YouTube channel, would love to promote your book because of the things that I've learned, right? For example, there's a gentleman I connected with. His name is Howard Rose. I consider him like a modern day Miles Monroe. Everybody familiar with Miles Monroe? Okay, this guy, Howard Rose Jr., if you look him up, he's got a laundry list of kingdom books right? It's written by a living man today. The reason why I say modern day, if you, don't, you know, Miles Monroe passed away. I didn't even know the dude passed away. For like a year and a half, I was watching him on YouTube after I got saved. I'm like, I'm going to meet this guy one day. I'm going to shake his hand and do all this. Stuff. And all of a sudden, I see a tribute video. I'm like, tribute means that person no longer here. And then I looked into it. And I was like, oh, you got to be kidding me. This guy's not here. But I managed to um, visit his uh, a burial site. He has a beautiful plaque with him and his wife. You can still see their faces. So I, I managed to pay my respects, go to their church. Phenomenal experience. But uh, Howard Rose talks a lot. I mean, he's dedicating his whole life to just kingdom, 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 kingdom. So he's got books on understanding kingdom commonwealth, understanding kingdom uh, government, and understanding kingdom living, right? And he approaches it from scripture, spiritual, and also just very mechanical, like logical stuff. And that's what we're gonna get into in the next few minutes here. So authorization comes from, being, comes from having authority, being the author, right? And 
because you are who you are and there's not another one of you that will ever be, nor has there ever been one before, you can authentically do what you've been called to do. So in the kingdom, we are authorized ambassadors of the kingdom representing to the world, right? So let's go to the next slide. That just talks about levels of authority. Let's go to, we already covered know your numbers. Um, simple definition of velocity banking. What I'm going to get into is how velocity banking works in the kingdom, in the kingdom. I just share with you how it works in commercial jurisdiction, okay? And again, full transparency. The next few slides, I truly believe, like, God was speaking to me to kind of write it out because you're not going to find it in Scripture, okay? That's one of my downsides when I present, and I was telling Pastor Mark about it. I'm like, this is something I just got to uh, learn how to do, how to correlate Scripture. Um, so I'm going to rely on you to help me find the Scriptures that can back this up because we have to be in alignment. We have to become one, one body right? I might be the feet, she might be the toes, he might be the fingers, you know, she over there might be the, the arm, left arm, right arm, but we all come together as one. Is that clear? So velocity banking, simple definition, the ability to leverage OPM, other people's money, right? Via a line of credit, PLOC, BLOC, HELOC, we went over those debt tools, to rapidly pay off debt by canceling interest on your debts faster than traditional ways of paying off debt using your own discretionary income, aka cash flow, right? Next slide, if that was confusing, simplified definition is borrowing from Peter to pay Paul. That's all we're doing. We're borrowing from Peter to pay Paul where Peter charges me zero interest or very little to Paul who was charging me interest, right? Hence paying off the debt faster when all all of our income is going to the principal, right? That's what velocity banking allows us to do in commercial jurisdiction, okay? Next slide, okay? Now we're gonna get into velocity banking in the kingdom. Now, before I get into it, I just wanna make sure we're on the same page. What is a kingdom, right? It involves a king and there's a domain, agreed? Cool. So who is the king? Okay, I agree. I believe that God the Father is the king, and he has a domain. He has his domain that operates outside of space, time, and matter. Agree? And then from that, he birthed space, time, and matter, which we're now in the cosmos, in planet Earth. And you agree he has dominion over that. We agree. Okay, cool. So, fast forward to 21st century. You've got all these world governments going on. You've got man-created systems. Would you agree that in the Garden of Eden, pre-fall and then after fall, that when he instructed us to have dominion, where is that in Genesis? Have dominion. Okay, so have dominion over all the earth, right? Now, was there a business plan somewhere in Genesis that step-by-step step goes over how to do that? Mm, not quite, right? So would you agree, and this is, again, a learning experience because I'm, I'm, I'm still new in my spiritual growth. Does God speak to us that may not necessarily be like word for word scripture, but like he, he tells you to do something, right? And then, you know, you can typically find a scripture or story that you can kind of correlate it, right? Okay, so I think that's what happened here when I was writing, okay? Again, I don't know what I'm saying. Step one in terms of velocity banking in the kingdom, how it works is there's a king who has an infinite amount of resources that is God. He created all the, the, the wealth in the world, right? We created fiat currency. He created gold and silver. So the king has 
or acquires gold and silver in his domain, his jurisdiction. If I have a domain, I have status. Jurisdiction means status, if I'm not mistaken. So I have status, I have authority over anything that goes on in that domain. Agreed? Okay, cool. Step two of how God, our Father, is sending his resources to the earth realm. And he used Jesus to, to create, or I should say, reestablish the connection that we lost. Agreed? So the king has an ecclesia. Now, if you can help me find the scripture that can back this up. When Jesus asked Peter, who do you say that I am? Right? He said, you are the Christ, right? And then he said, upon that, what? Right? Or, or uh, would another word be upon that statement? Upon that, like, declaration? Uh-oh. Upon that, like, you are the Christ. Upon that, he said, I will build my, what? Was church the word that was used? Or was it ecclesia? I don't know. I'm asking. There's a lot of doctrine out there. There's a lot of versions of the word. Now, if we can come together and figure that out, I think the word ecclesia was used, right? Or he might have said, I will build my, my ministry or kingdom to that effect. So... The king, Jesus, God the Father, Holy Spirit, has an ecclesia. What is an ecclesia? Ecclesia has a few definitions. One of them means called out ones. Called out ones. You can write that. A longer definition, according to, um, this is, you can find this in Google, written out like this, or some Christian websites that I've been on, um, I've just been kind of like finding all the different things. So the king has an ecclesia, a political cabinet, a political cabinet, not a worship team. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I better be careful, right? I'm going to offend some people. Not a prayer group meeting. Not to say that that's not important, but where does it kind of start and, and how does it expand from there, right? A political cabinet that he appoints, there is no voting. I, I did not get voted to, to be here, right? I didn't win a, a competition. I didn't earn my uh, a, a right to be here on this stage. There was nothing I did. Rather, it was what he did through me. And Pastor Mark saw it and recognized it and listened to the Holy Spirit that what he was receiving. And then boom, right? So the king has an ecclesia political cabinet that he appoints as authorized ambassadors re-presenting, right? We represent, but we're re because we're remembering, we're restoring, we're re-establishing everything that we lost from the fall, Right? So rep representing the king with the sole purpose of manifesting the king's will to the people and territory over which the king rules. Well, here's, here's some good news. The king owns it all over the whole earth. So technically speaking, these world governments only have temporary authorization. You and I have permanent Yes, we lost it, but with the right key, we can reestablish that connection and, and access everything that we need, right? So let's go to the next step. From there, the king authorizes the ecclesia, the called out ones, right? That could be a, 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 through, I believe, what's called a, a sevenfold ministry. Uh, other doctrines might call it a fivefold ministry, but essentially, everybody has spiritual gifts and talents, agreed? And so with those skills, gifts, and talents, we come together as an ecclesia, as one, get this, 
in commercial jurisdiction coming together as one would be a corporation. Amazon, Facebook, Google. It is no one owner. It's a multitude of people coming together. How many employees does Google have? Tens of thousands, right? Caterpillar Machinery, um, Dell, uh, Apple, tens of thousands of employees coming together to manifest the will of the author of that product to, to manufacture it and, and produce sales and revenue. Because in their jurisdiction, it's all about the money, right? In our jurisdiction, it's all about the good news, the great commission, right? Do I have that wrong or correct? I'm just making sure because, again, I'm, I don't know this. I don't know what I'm saying. So step three, the king authorized the ecclesia to have control, management, biblical stewardship according to an acts-based economy, okay? Wealth starts with giving in the kingdom. Okay, over the gold and silver, this is interesting, over the gold and silver to monetize in a banking system to stimulate organic economic community growth and development. That's a mouthful. I don't know who wrote that. That wasn't me. Um, by the way, my, my, my girlfriend put it all together and made it pretty. But as I was writing it down, I'm like, I don't even know what this stuff means. Step four, right? And hopefully you're taking notes, taking pictures. You know, I'm glad to send this to anybody who wants it. But I want you to see how our jurisdiction in the kingdom has been established since Jesus coming here and then all throughout the next 2,000 years leading up to this very point now and how it relates to commercial jurisdiction. Very similar, right? So step four, the ecclesia called out ones, authorized ambassadors, okay? We gather together in common unity to form the ecclesiastical sovereign jurisdiction. Was, was um, Paul a sovereign citizen? Does anybody know? Can anybody verify that for me? Paul the apostle, right? He was a Roman citizen, yes? Okay. When he converted... He became born again, and then he got citizenship in the kingdom, yeah? As did you. Pastor Mark used the word citizens before. That means that you have duties, responsibilities to that domain. So you and I have dual citizenship, just like if you're from another country and you live in America, you can have dual, dual citizenship, right, in, in, in the country that you're native to, right? Okay, well, works the same way here. So the ecclesia gathers together in common unity and forms this ecclesiastical sovereign jurisdiction, right? Sovereign, sovereignty. Can anybody tell me what that means? And maybe we can have a mic runner. Like, you can raise your hand. Like, to be sovereign Supreme, total, dominion. Okay, so we have the ability to be sovereign over this earth. And then we are princes, princesses, sons and daughters in his kingdom because he's the one who authorized the transaction through the redemption of Jesus Christ's blood. Okay? So the ecclesia gathers together in common unity and form the ecclesiastical jurisdiction over which the king rules, a.k.a. here's where I use commercial terms. Planning, formation, trust, family office, unincorporated associations, self-supported ministries, ministry, ministries of ministries. Okay, these, are, these are jurisdictional statements that allows you to operate outside of the tax code. Five minutes? Okay, and we'll go to break. Cool. From there, the Ecclesia recruits and promotes a 500 or more labor 
force to build systems and structures in the jurisdiction over which the king rules. So we have blue collar, white collar workers, entrepreneurs, the innovators, the, the creators, the content creators, the coaches, the worship team, the prayer team, all these different systems that the church can provide just like your US government provides welfare, we could do the same thing here if we came together and gathered our resources, our time, talent, and treasure. Very possible. Next step. The ecclesia collateralizes the gold and silver it was given and monetizes the gold and silver into the world marketplace through a point of exchange. Most of you are familiar with a POS system, point of sale. That's commercial jurisdiction. In the kingdom, you and I don't buy and sell things. We exchange, we barter. If I exchange something with you, that is a non-taxable event. If I give you $500 right now, the government will not tax that, right? Depending on how much I give in that jurisdiction, they can come after what I gave, right? So in here, monetizes it through a point of exchange system, essentially redefining progress to acquire cash flow vehicles that produce royalties, not income, royalties back to the authorized members of the ecclesia, right? Step seven, the ecclesia operates under an acts-based economy to distribute and remit I'm using kingdom words, kingdom jurisdictional words, to distribute and remit rewards to members of the ecclesia via a relationship. What does God want with us? A relationship and royalty sharing covenant, not contract. We operate in blood, covenant. When Jesus died, that was a transaction. He what? Paid for your, oh, okay, interesting. So step eight, go to the next one. The cash flow vehicles that were acquired by the Ecclesia establishes a self-sustaining greenhouse that can provide for members of the Ecclesia, the self-sustaining greenhouse, the tithes and offerings that you give, okay? Provides for members of the Ecclesia in times of need, crisis recovery, or capital seed funding. Imagine being able to come to the light church and get a loan at 1%, maybe nothing, rather than Bank of America. Oh my goodness. Is that exciting? It can be done. So the last step, the cash flow vehicles acquired real estate, the cryptocurrencies, the gold, the silver, the alexandrite, the sapphires, the oil, the, the, the agriculture, the, the food, the farm, the land, anything and everything that can produce revenue in commercial jurisdiction can come back into the kingdom jurisdiction and it produces a return of liberty, not a return of investment. That's commercial jurisdiction. Why do, I, why do we say return of liberty? Well, you're restoring your what? Freedom. You're getting freedom when you come into the kingdom. Oh, my goodness. So the cash flow vehicles acquired produces a return of liberty for the ecclesia to build and multiply our seed. And we rinse, lather, repeat, remaining under the authority and protection of the king under his law to avoid falling from grace into unrighteous works, or in other words, incorrect positioning. Because you and I sin every day, but to be righteous, if I'm not mistaken, just simply means you're correctly positioned to receive all that you ought to receive. So we're gonna take a break now.